Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today uh, to discuss acoustic louvers and why we use them and what they are and um, why they're such an important item in many construction projects today. So today, entitled Successful Applications Fixed Blade Acoustic Louvers. A lot of people ask, what are acoustic louvers? And in the acoustic louver industry, we often say, those of us that also are in the ventilation silencer business, uh, that acoustic louvers are short, stubby silencers. Basically, you take a silencer and you smash it along its length into a smaller box, and there's your acoustic louver. Uh, it's used in areas where there's space restrictions, very often uh, either when the footprint is small to start in new construction or in the 11th and a half hour when there might be a noise issue uh, out of a mechanical room or generator room, something like that, and we have to put in some acoustic silencing. And uh, there's not a lot of room there, not a lot of length, not a lot of space. So louvers uh, come into play. The, the, the blades of these louvers are fixed. A lot of people ask, are they movable blades? No, they're fixed blade acoustic louvers. They're not a damper, not meant to be used like a damper. Uh, but uh, so that's a little explanation there. Acoustic louver applications, uh, they can be used as many er in many areas of construction, of, of building construction and surrounding uh, building areas. Acoustic louvers used as part of the intake and exhaust systems of mechanical rooms uh, is very common. Generator rooms, such as on the lower left uh, picture here, this is a central utility plant for a major hospital. And these are these four uh, openings here, uh, which are about 14 and a half foot square, are discharge off of radiator cooled generators. And uh, those are fixed blade acoustic louvers. There's no through line of sight. They're 24 inch deep to control the noise levels. Originally, this site had just weather louvers. And what happened when they started up the, the generators, uh, ran them all, uh, this is the main rear entrance of the hospital where our point of view is, and it was running at about 85 dBA, which is quite loud. And then behind this central utility plant, there are the outside air intake openings. And those were replaced with acoustic louvers as well, because on the other side of this central utility plant, property line very close, there's a 250 home uh, subdivision. And so there was a lot of noise breaking out of there and acoustic louvers, because everything was installed and assembled, acoustic louvers were great to use uh, because there was minimal space to install them. Now on the right here, they can also be used as part of a barrier wall, like an equipment yard barrier wall. This particular one on the right is on a roof at a school. And there was a lot of um, mechanical equipment up there, some of it very close to the roof. Uh, to the walls, so they needed plenty of airflow, cross ventilation. So mechanical engineer liked it uh, because it was allowing the equipment ventilation and proper operation. The architect liked it because of the look. And, and so as just a, instead of a solid uh, barrier wall system, acoustic system, they used acoustic louvers. Another way you can use acoustic louvers as a, a portion of a composite solution. In this case, we have an air-cooled chiller where the noise was, was too loud, both noise propagating upward and noise propagating out the sides. So this particular noise block solution uses a skirt of acoustic louvers down and parallel to the long dimensions on both sides of this of the air-cooled chiller. So it allows airflow in at an extremely low pressure drop, like three one hundredths of an inch static pressure drop. So it's basically invisible to the equipment and not stressing out the equipment, but instead allowing it to operate properly. But also it's controlling the noise and giving you the noise reduction, similar to uh, what the barrier panels would, would be as well. So the two together give a composite noise reduction result that was desired. And you can see here on the outside, the solid blade faces, on the inside, you're actually looking at the perforated faces. So on every acoustic louver, the top of the blade is solid metal, the bottom of the blade is perforated metal, and then the acoustic louver is filled with insulation to absorb sound energy. Um, so you can see kind of how it, we, we uh, inserted, in this case, these were W columns and some backer angles, and they were able to sit right into the columns in this case 
we also make various thicknesses of louvers, so there'd be various methods of attachment. Another way you can use acoustic louvers is, is uh, single and double doors. Uh, you allow that, that unfettered access, you have immediate access, and uh, you also have the airflow. So a lot of times this works out well, uh, wastewater treatment plant, plants, pump rooms, uh, just anywhere where you need the access, but you also need the airflow. So we can design acoustic louvers of various thicknesses, as you can see here, both the elevation and the, uh, the plan view up here. And what we use very often is, is um, uh, piano hinges, heavy duty piano hinges is something that works so great in these applications with simple clasps, where you can use uh, uh, padlocks or different types of locks. So it's not an exotic door, but it does the job and it looks very nice. So acoustic louvers, as mentioned before, the mechanism of performance, why do they perform? Why do they offer noise control? Well, the blades, like we say, are angled. So you can have one like here on the left, which is a no through line of sight, kind of a security, uh, and, and you don't see the equipment behind it, but also security. And then on the right, you see just a sloped blade where depending what angle you're at, you can actually see right through them. But once again, the top of every blade is solid metal. The bottom of the blades are perforated metal. And then within those blades, uh, we have acoustic media. Let's see, relatively large absorption surface. So that's what's really neat here on why these work. We all agree that noise is sound energy. That's what it is. It's airborne sound energy. And what's nice here is when you look at every blade, the bottom of every blade being perforated metal, well, basically that adds up, you know, a large surface area that the sound can penetrate through and then be absorbed. So every blade is an additional surface area where noise can be absorbed. If you look at our acoustic louvers, we have various models, thicknesses, and then hence uh, performance. So if you look at a KCAC, kinetics model KCAC, that's a chevron or V-shaped air passage, the note through line of sight, kind of a security type louver. Uh, they come in 30 to 40% open area, and they come in anywhere between six, 12, 16, and 24 inch depths. There's a note through line of sight, like we said, that's gonna give you your maximum noise control. But for given face velocities, it's also going to give you a, a fairly high pressure drop. But as long as you keep base velocities about 250 feet per minute uh, to 350 feet per minute, uh, then you know it's a, it's a great louver to use. Now, the key there when we talk about face velocity, it's not passage velocity, but it's the velocity taking the height of this louver times the width of this louver and then taking the CFM divided by that, that's the face velocity. That's how we normalize our pressure drop data, not passage velocity. Model KCPL, those come in 30 to 40% open areas as well. Also, they're, they're a angled passage. So depending where you stand on the outside, you can actually see through it. Um, it uh, gives you a lower pressure drop than the KCAC for a given percent open area in CFM. It's got thinner blades, so there's always more blades. It's more of an architectural look. That's why we've come out with the KCPL. It gives you a much more architectural look than the next louver we're going to talk about. You get medium noise reduction here on the KCPL. On the KCAL, the nice thing here is for those applications where you need just a little bit of noise control, you really don't want to neck. You have very little uh, pressure drop, uh, external pressure drop uh, available. So these are 40 to 50% open area. The blades tend to be thicker and fewer than the KCPL. Great louver, but the reason, like I said, we came out with KCPL is it has a much more architectural look, thinner, more blades. And this is a low to medium noise reduction, medium noise reduction, maximum noise reduction. Now, if you look at acoustic louvers, although they are not weather louvers and they're not intended to be weather louvers, okay? A lot of times they're paired with maybe hurricane louvers or sand louvers, uh, you know, some type of weather louver, but there are guidelines and there are tests that are run uh, to take a look at the uh, water penetration. Basically, it varies with percent open area. I think you can, you can expect that the more percent open area, a 50% open area louver is probably going to have 
more water penetration for a given face velocity than you would a more restrictive, uh, maybe 30% open area louver. The beginning point, basically what we're talking about water penetration, it's the beginning point of water uh, penetration at 0.01 ounces per square foot of louver face. So if we look at this and we look at the KCAC, if you design anywhere, depending, now this is all gonna be a function of the depth of louver too. So the deeper the louver, so a six inch louver is not gonna perform as well as a 12 inch louver at uh, 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 controlling water penetration. But based upon your various thicknesses and percent open areas, uh, you can be running anywhere between 280 to 618 feet per minute. Of course, the deeper the louver, the higher the face velocity you can do before you start having any water penetration issues. These are guidelines. It's not a pass-fail. It's something that if you're designing, uh, you can go ahead and um, uh, design towards these values. You also have a face velocity for 265 to 400 feet per minute for the KCPL. Remember, the KCPL only goes up to about uh, 12 inch deep. Same thing for the KCAL. Uh, KCAL, since it has a much more open area, 40 to 50% open area, uh, you have a much lower face velocity before you start to run into some water entrainment issues, penetration. Acoustic louvers come in various constructions and finishes. All right, you can have galvanized G90 coating would be a standard. If you're going to powder coat something or wet paint something, we would use a galvanil, an A60, an annealed product, which is basically some of you had heard over the years, paint grip pot products or mill phosphatized galvanized that readily accepts paint. The better uh, product now uh, moving into the future and today is, is an annealed product, which does the same thing. It's an annealing process makes it still gives you the uh, galvanized uh, uh, corrosion resistance, but also gives you a great surface uh, to adhere paint to, whether it's powder or wet paint. Stay, for many industrial projects or wastewater treatment plants, you can be looking at stainless steel types 304 and 316 or aluminum 3003 type H14. They have forms of acoustic media in them. And a lot of times you get a question and people say, well, if this is out, if this is, you know, bringing in fresh air, let's say an outside air intake into a mechanical equipment room, um, you know, it might be moist air, there might be some water. Do we need to put any kind of fiberglass cloth or vapor barrier or erosion barrier around the insulation? And you can do that, but in all reality, you don't need to. So the acoustic media that we use is more of a wick away product. So if it gets wet, same thing in some of our ventilation silences, if it gets wet, it more so wicks away and, and then dries and does not settle out on you. So that that's real good. Um, like I said, powder coat finish. Uh, we also have a wet fluoropon finish. We have uh, paint that can be warranted for 10 years or paint that can be warranted for 20 years. Uh, we have a mill finish, which is an unpainted louver, which you see on the left. You see a louver in the middle there going through a powder coat line. That's a four foot by eight foot by 12 inch deep louver. And then you can look at, uh, we also have bird screens and flanges we can offer. And on the right there, uh, you can look at and see how we would mount the bird screen, basically frame the bird screen. We This isn't bug screen though. This is uh, not insect screen, it's bird screen. You can put insect screen, but you have to be careful with insect screen because it's going to increase your pressure drop. So bird screen is what we use. Uh, if you do use on uh, bug screen or insect screen, just make sure you have enough external static to overcome that, that uh, pressure drop. There's various ways you can install our louvers. As you saw on the previous slide, this is the most wonderful thing. If you look at these louvers, they are just solid boxes, all perimeter. So the whole perimeter is just a solid face of 16 gauge metal or heavier for equal strength if you go to aluminum. But that gives you a lot of flexibility for mounting. And so some people will have a concrete, say an existing concrete opening. Sometimes they might want a flush mount on the outside if this is the outdoors on this side. And so they will invert what I call inverted, a either formed angle or a structural angle. That angle could be two by two by three sixteenths, uh, four by four by quarter inch. It can be one and an eighth by one and an eighth by 10 gauge. There's a lot of different mounting methods there where they can anchor it, anchor it into the substrate and then sheet metal tech screw it to the outer casing with no damage to the louver. It's a great solid joint. 
the next thing you can do though on the right is if you want to have an a an angle what i would consider a standard angle where you have slightly some of the louver protruding out a little more a little easier to install than the one on the left but they're both they're both correct they will both work fine uh, it really depends on the look that the architect wants now a lot of our louvers um, it seems like the big spark of louvers are coastal applications that we've seen. I mean, louvers have just been a hot item for the last five years, especially, but forever, but for the last five years. And there's a lot of coastal applications. So sometimes coastally, depending on your IBC adopted code for wind speed, you'll need maybe a little more uh, structural integrity on your mounting. So in this case, you might need angle on the outside. If this is the interior of the mechanical room, you might need a flat plate there or angle and angle if you want to straddle that opening. So there's a lot of options there. But what's neat about Kinetics is we can help you with that. Uh, for instance, uh, a lot of customers will have their own structural steel already designed and in place. What Kinetics can do is help design and supply the attachment methods, the angles and all that. And the reason we can do that at Kinetics, which is so nice, is that Kinetics is heavy into seismic restraint, uh, vibration isolation, structure form, structure form, vibration isolation. We have a lot of structural engineers on staff. So we have our own structural engineers on staff. And, and that is, we have that capabilities to help and work with the engineer of record or who's ever designing the receiving structure. Uh, so that's really awesome. Here's another one where, where uh, the architect might want the look of, I don't want to see the steel. You know, whereas on the previous one, you'll actually see the steel, the tube steel in this case, could be W columns, could be concrete, but they can see that. Whereas let's say they already have tube steel framing all the way up. This would be like a barrier. This is a barrier wall system. So this is an elevation view that you see here. And they have their tube steel columns, their horizontal tube steel braces, and that's all installed. Well, then they want to put acoustic louvers, adhere them to that surface mount, what we would call it. And everything you see here in red or blue would be what Kinetics would design and offer the structural analysis, the reaction forces, and all that information needed. We would design and supply all the blue and uh, red items here for bracing. And, and I think that's a great a, a great opportunity, the people that, and, and we can also design the whole structure if you want, but very often somebody has already designed this structure well in advance. Sometimes you may have an opening in this case, like I mentioned on that, that, that uh, central utility plant where the bank here might be 14 foot six by 14 foot six or 14 foot wide by 20 foot high. We won't make one louver that is 14 wide, 20 foot, high and maybe 12 inch deep and then you got to paint it too and then you have to ship it to the job site instead we'll make it into smaller louvers to be field banked all right so field banking there's going to be a perimeter angle all the way around which we can see here and then where all these come together these acoustic louvers stack like building blocks both on the outside and the inside surface of the room they're attached to we'll get this joiner strip flashing that then flashes over those butt joints and then also works as some support. Here's a, a system just like that. You know, you can see that tube steel framing that was designed in place. Uh, the acoustic louvers, 12 inch deep. I think these were about uh, uh, six feet tall by five feet wide. And uh, what they were doing was they were actually just, you can see they're putting them in like building blocks and tying them in place and then from the back, shooting them together with tech screws, and then they would cover all the butt joints on the outside with that joiner flashing. Now, we talked about a lot of an acoustic louvers, uh, varying percent open areas, varying pressure drop, and that's the neat thing, which I didn't mention earlier, was because there's so many varying percent open areas, at models at Kinetics, and so many different depths, there's a louver here that will work for your application. There's so much opportunity to be able to pick the right louver to tune it to the back pressure allowed and also the noise reduction you need. So that's the nice thing is it it's better than just having one or two louvers. You really need to have a good gamut of louvers uh, like we do because every application is 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 different. Now, Kinetics can design and manufacture not just rectangular louvers, 
but we're running into more and more where we can custom cut louver shapes. We have the capabilities with SolidWorks and all of our uh, analysis internally and our automated uh, DXF and, and laser and, and, and uh, cut items that we can make triangles if you need to. And in this case, a lot of them, like in the lower right, you can see it's actually a triangle that's fitting in the, in the part of a building. Uh, the architect wants that look. You know, we have one here that's a that's an outside air intake bunker, we call it, because it's under a, basically afterwards they put grass in here and everything looked beautiful, but to service that building back there. The point is there's a certain look that somebody wants, the architect wants, and, and what they want is they want that look, but they also need the noise reduction and the back pressure to be correct. Well, Kinetics has those capabilities. So louvers do not need to be rectangular with sharp edge cuts. And I must say, it sounds silly, but no applications too small. You hear that? No jobs too big, no jobs too small. So whether it is uh, retrofit acoustic louvers on a pump building where they've taken the weather louvers out, these were all weather louvers on the right here, but due to the noise standard they need on site, 85 dBA uh, that they were looking for, the weather louvers weren't giving them to them at this pump house. So they popped out the weather louvers. And remember how I said you can tune our louvers, noise reduction and back pressure. So we had to make sure the back pressure was not too much. These are VPLs, see how there's thinner and more blades, so it looks more architecturally pleasing. And we were able to pick a model with percent open area and depth, both to control the, you know, stay within the back pressure available and control the noise reduction. On the left, we have actually a piece of equipment uh, where we had to fit acoustic louvers to the equipment. All those acoustic louvers on this side are actually hinged on one side and are able to be open for access to the equipment. So that's a smaller job, but also we can do very large jobs. Uh, acoustic louvers can be applied to big, big jobs. Uh, for instance, this building here uh, on this wall, uh, it was for a uh, big compressors, jet engine uh, generating. And what happens here is that this side, we only had acoustic louvers up about uh, one, two, three, four, about 50, about, uh, I'm sorry, 30 feet. But on the other side of the buildings, which were 100 feet, 140 feet long, they were louvers from floor to, uh, to eave there. And so that really worked out good. And then over here on the left, that's a very large um, chiller yard. And it's a chiller yard at a university. They had weather louvers in there. This university is really big in the tennis. And if you go from our point of view, there's a bunch of tennis courts. And what happened was the university was so happy. They got brand new cooling towers and they had weather louvers here. The problem is they couldn't hear the announcements across where we are looking at this picture. They couldn't hear the announcements during the tennis matches. So lo and behold, Kinetics came by and with our acoustic louvers and these are just the angled ones. Remember I said at a certain angle, you can see through them and, and that was fine uh, in, in this case. But with the V-shaped louvers, you wouldn't have seen that. Now our acoustic louvers are very important to us because they're important to you uh, and they're all painted. So with our acoustic louvers, all our acoustic louver jobs are palletized, banded, foam wrapped, because they're almost always powder coated probably 99.9% .9 of the time. There's a skeleton frame built here with plywood sides. And this is a way we can ship it all over the country and all over the world because we do supply acoustic louvers worldwide. And so uh, we take a lot of pride in getting you the product you need uh, when you need it in one piece to, to hold up to all the freight and, and the rough handling. So with that, I wanted to say, you know, Kinetics, we create quiet that improves the quality of life. That's what we do. Uh, we're a company that just deals in noise control products and systems and solutions and your knowledge base. That's what we do. We make no other products, but if it deals with uh, 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 vibration isolation, airborne noise control, seismic or wind restraint, that's what we're about. So if you have any questions uh, in the future, one of the best emails to get you hooked up either with one of our reps to help you out locally, uh, or you can contact us directly at the factory as environmental sales, which means outdoor noise control, environmental sales at kineticsnoise.com. Um, I'm John Sofer, Director of Sales for the Environmental, Industrial, and Commercial Airside Markets. My email there, jsofer at kineticsnoise.com. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. And uh, with that, um, that is uh, concludes our presentation for today, and I appreciate you giving me a little bit of time.
we do not have any questions at this point in time, but um, we'll go ahead and hang out for a couple more minutes. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to use the question bar um, in your GoToWebinar window, or yeah, definitely um, you can email John at that email that's on the screen. So like I said, we'll hang out for a couple more minutes. And uh, yeah. do you have before and after data? Of uh, Yes, actually, that is a great, uh, Craig, that is a great uh, question. So kinetics noise control data is backed three ways. It's backed by uh, finite elements. We have a one-of-a-kind finite element acoustics program that will be able to take all this into account and come up with uh, uh, transmission loss data. We also have all of our louvers independently tested for ASTM E90 for transmission loss and independent laboratories. And then we also have uh, before and after data where we can then compare and see how well it models the real life applications. Uh, and when we use our acoustic louvers, transmission loss converted to noise reduction, we also take into account the reflectivity of the surrounding areas and work with the acoustical consultant or engineer. So great question, yes. Um, will you conduct future presentations, including sound attenuators like this? Actually, we will, and we already have one in our um, in uh, Kinetics Data Bank. Uh, uh, Becca can get you hooked up with that, where we give a, uh, I think Kristen, uh, Becca, it's about an, a 50 minute or 40 minute presentation, and mm -hmm. all on silencers, how they perform, types, uses, all that, yes. Yeah, um, feel free to reach out to marketing at kineticsnoise.com and I can send you um, some of the other presentations that we've done in the past. So once again, contact us folks, uh, be on the lookout. Kinetics is having a lot of presentations have over the last year. I hope everybody's staying safe and that we're all coming out of this situation we've been in for a year and start living again a little bit. So really appreciate everybody joining us. Thank you.